Ron Kendrick doesn't really know how he got it. He'd hit the grocery store, church, normal stuff. Two days later, the fever started and it didn't let up. Uh, yeah, the isolation part, being around nobody, that was very hard. But uh, the fever and the breathing problems, it just got to me after a while. I, at one point, they thought they were going to put me on a respirator, but I made it through with just oxygen. I'm still on oxygen for my lungs because it drops below 90 if I don't have it. So, but yeah, it was it was scary. But then and at the same time, I was away from my family, and that that really tears you up. I know it. It has to. What What did you do to get you through those moments and those times? Ron, because that, that is a, a lonely, um, self-reflecting time, I'm sure. First three days, I didn't have my cell phone. Mm. Then my wife got it up to, her, to me, so I started FaceTiming her, and our pastors keep putting sermons and little teaching things online, so I watch them, and then my wife puts videos online of her singing, yeah. so I yeah. used all that to get through, and it was, it was pretty boring, but the staff at uh and nurses and doctors at uh pavilion six at regional they were just wonderful i mean they they were there for everything you need I, they just treated me so nice and it was kind of scary when you see all these people masking up to come in and check on you you know so and i just thank god that i've gone through it because the alternative was uh respirator or death and Thank God I don't have to do that. And you are wearing oxygen. Talk a little bit about what they've been able to tell you. Do they even know? Will Will that be something that lasts? Or do, you, do they know if it's permanent lung damage? What do they know? We don't know yet. I'm just using a bunch of inhalers and keeping this on, of course. And then I got sleep apnea, which makes it rough trying to wear a mask while you're coughing. So, yeah. it. but I'm getting through it. And... I had a little fever last night. I got a little concerned, but it's gone this morning. So, and then I check in with my doctor tomorrow with a video appointment. What What do you want to say to people who are worried about getting this? And, and maybe some of the people out there who are still getting together with friends and not really listening to what the governor is saying. Stay, stay away. I mean, it just takes one cough, one sneeze, and you got it. And, you know, it, it's scary. And you see the death toll keep rising and rising because we really don't have a handle on this yet and, or a set way to treat. My doc, one of my doctors told me, he said, you're pretty well a guinea pig because we don't know what to try because they kept running different antibiotics, different medicines. They said, basically, everybody who's getting it right now are guinea pigs trying to figure out what works best for this virus. And when it comes to the treatment and, and what you went through, like when you talk about breathing problems, can you describe that? Like, what was that like? Gasping for air, I would breathe very hard and just really hurt my chest trying to breathe because at one point my oxygen level got down to 83. So they had to put me on like four liters of oxygen to get me back up to about 92. So. But if I take this off, it drops below 90 and I can feel it because I have to hurry and take a shower when I take it off because I got to hurry and get it back on. But this, that breathing part's scary. It's very scary because you, what, <laughs> it's cumbersome to carry it around, but at the same time, <laughs> I need it. <laughs> so. Yeah, you feel better with it than without it, right? Yeah. Yes. And, the, and the alternative of not being here versus having oxygen on right now this is the way better alternative, right? Way, way better. I'm hoping tomorrow they say I can venture out of my room with a mask. We'll see. So, so you're still isolated. I'm still isolated in my bedroom and bathroom. So my wife sits meals on the table outside the door and then walks away for me to get them. Bless her. So, yeah, she's got her hands full. And so this is day 24 and you're still isolated? Yes. The doctor told me I, it could be over a month, so. Wow. Yeah. What do they consider your case? Severe, critical? I mean, at the time you were in the hospital, I'm assuming it was- It was severe. Critical. Yeah, it was cri 
critical, severe borderline critical. Because yeah. like I said, they were debating whether or not to put me on a vent. And that was pretty scary when they told me that. I was like, oh, no, no, no. I don't want to go on push the oxygen up or something. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to, I want to do it on my own. So, yeah. Yeah. so I made it through and then they were going to send me home one day, but then they had three patients up there. They had, what I heard there was seven of us all together up there at regional and three of them had to go on the vent that not that day that I was going to go home. So the doctor kept me one more day just to make sure that I wasn't going to, take a turn for the worse. Right. He said he literally just walked out of the room and turned around and had to go back in because their breathing just went downhill that quick. Wow. Ron had hoped to emerge from isolation yesterday. That would have been day 25. Here I want to show you, you see him with his wife, Mary, and their special needs son, Nick, when they could be together. But unfortunately, the doctor told Ron yesterday he needs to continue to isolate until Saturday. That will be day 27. He's asking for prayers from all of you that his lungs will eventually heal. While the state of South Carolina does not track recovery and how things turn out for patients here, there are worldwide trackers that offer us some hope. Currently, according to Johns Hopkins University, over 320,000 people like Ron have recovered from COVID-19. When we come back, art that honors our healthcare heroes. Plus, how some of our nurses are headed to New York to help that hotspot. I'm really at peace with it. I feel like it's something that you're called to do. Um, we're called to help others. 